welcome. Today I'm going to lead you through a short practice uh, that's really all about retraining your twists. The idea being that uh, a lot of times we try and kind of wrench our way into twists using our shoulders and our upper back. And it's true that anatomically your thoracic spine, your mid and upper back, are more suited to twisting. Right? You can you can get a lot of, you can get more rotation there, but at the same time, uh, when you try to lift your chest and and you know you're you're thinking oh I'm going to be upright and then I'm going to twist a lot of times what happens is that actually tenses the muscles of your spine and locks out your vertebra a little bit. So when you try to twist, you lose a lot of the ability to twist. You also might be uh, kind of getting tight in your hip flexor because when we try and lift our chest, lift our heart, a lot of times what we're doing is actually um, using our hip flexors to pull ourselves forward. And so then you get tightness in there, which also limits your ability to twist. And so what I'm going to encourage today is for us to start to feel how we can uh, use our guts in our twists, use our abdomen, and actually start to move our whole spine and, and create twists that way. And so that way, not only do we get a little more out of our twists, not in like, you can twist further, though you might be able to, uh, but more importantly that you're getting a really healthy lengthening of, of certain parts of your back and your hips, but you're also going to be really well supported by your uh, abdominal muscles, by your hip musculature. And so it's just a really nice combination that can actually make twists really healing, healthy, and feel good in your back rather than uh, kind of feel nasty later on. So this is a quick practice that will uh, just sort of give you a little bit of a, a different mindset when you go into your twists, hopefully. So we'll start actually on hands and knees. Please put a blanket under your knees if you feel like that would be more comfortable. And do a couple of cat cows. So just warm up your spine a little bit, lifting your head and tailbone, and then switching your breath and going the other direction. Choose for yourself how to breathe. Make sure that you are breathing. to a neutral spine and stretch your right leg out to the side. Toes point forward. Do a couple of cat cows right here. After the next time that you exhale, come to a neutral spine. Lift your right arm toward the ceiling. Turn from your belly and then thread the needle. So as you thread this way, you might get a little more opening in your inner thigh on the right side. Wait for the end of your next exhale. And come out of the pose. Now cross your right ankle in front of your left knee. So it's just like you were going to do a, a pigeon or something like that. Except your hips stay over your knees here. And then come down like puppy pose. You might try to shift your hips to the right, so toward that figure four leg. And notice what it would feel like to push your right knee actively into the ground. And walk your hands back up. Unravel this right leg and stretch your left leg out to the side. Find a couple of cat cows right here.
Next time after you exhale, come back to a neutral spine. Lift your left arm as you do so, turn your belly, your guts toward the ceiling. And thread. Come out of the pose and cross your left ankle just in front of your right thigh. Set your knees down. Hips line up over your knees and come down to your forearms. Relax your neck. Maybe shift your hips a little bit side to side, especially to the left. It's going to give you a little more hip zest. Actively press your left knee down into the ground. See what that feels like. And after that, come out of the pose, unravel. And find downward facing dog. Lift your hips, maybe walk out your dog a little bit. And walk your feet between your hands, finding a forward fold. And then bring your hands, uh, elbows, right to your knees. I'm going to try again. And with your elbows at your knees, you're in sort of a chair pose shape. <clears throat> Start to push your heels down into the ground and engage your low belly. Like you're trying to lift your low belly up away from your thighs and come to standing. Good. If you have a block, grab your block. It could also be a well, or just something that you can squeeze, that's going to go between your knees. If you don't have anything like that, don't worry about it. Put your feet together and squeeze your knees, right? And the idea is that you're starting to get a little bit of inner thigh action where you squeeze your knees. And you can put your hands on your thighs. And so when we twist, especially when we're going into deeper twists, we want our belly to actually move side to side. So it's not just about rotating, but if you actually move your belly over to one side, then it doesn't take as much rotation to get what you want out of the pose, right? So if you can squeeze your block, this helps keep you from getting pinched hips. And take your right hand outside of your right thigh, you're going to use it to help you move your belly over to the right. And do the same thing to the left, keep squeezing your block. Use your left hand on your left thigh to help you move your belly over. And if you need a squat break at some point, then stand up, take a squat break. This next time, when you take your right hand to your thigh and move your belly to the right, see if your forearm or your elbow can now go outside of your right knee. And then do the same thing to the left. We're not really even asking for a huge twist yet. We're really just going side to side, trying to get this belly move going. Squeeze your block around your gut. This next time when you go to the right, squeeze whatever you've got, and then start to turn your belly toward the ceiling, if you can imagine that. And that's your twist, squeeze whatever you've got, your block or whatever. And then come back into the other side, move your belly to the left, bring your forearm and your elbow down, and then add the twist, like you're turning your guts toward the ceiling. And just by virtue of nature, your chest is going to turn. And then release that, come to standing, and then forward bent. Step back to downward facing dog. Lower your knees down 
and come to a child's pose for a moment, or you can sit back to your heels. Give your legs a little break from all that spine. It's good for us, but you know, it's not everyone's favorite all the time. And then come back forward to hands and knees. Stretch your right leg back behind you at first. And then bring your right foot outside of your right hand. So we're going to end up in a, a lizard pose, which might mean that you want blocks or something to help you, uh, give you a little more support here. You can also just keep your hands down, that's fine too. But here in this pose, start to dig your right heel into the ground so that you get like, really push it down in there and just feel for that action. And then bring your right hand to your inner thigh or to the top of your thigh, really. So what we're gonna go for now is like, if you do a little cat cow, so kind of lifting forward, and then when you try and do cat, you're imagining that you're rounding, you're probably not gonna get a lot of rounding. Yeah. But when we twist, we want a little bit of that cat shape. So you're not actually trying to really round your back, but you're trying to engage your belly so that it comes away from your thigh and you're not going to pinch your hip flexor and you have more room to twist. So now you're going to spin guts to the right toward that front leg and twist open. And then this one you just have some space to do it. And then release that. Switch your legs. Left leg comes forward. If you want your forearms to come down, they can. You don't have to. If your forearms don't come down, you grant to have a little more room for the cat cow. <laughs> and your left hand goes to your left thigh. So it's like we're starting the action of twisting, but we're not actually doing it yet. So you can do a little cat cow. The other thing that happens when you kind of pull your belly in and do cat is that you're not leaning into this back leg as much, which is also a little healthier for your hips and that makes it easier to twist. So do the belly in and then spin your guts to the left. Spin, 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 and breathe. So I'm not trying to lift my chest and twist. That creates tension in your hip flexor, which you can maybe feel if you do it. But I'm doing that almost like that cat belly when I twist. And then I release. Step back to hands and knees and grab your blocks. Now, if you don't have blocks, you can still do this. Uh, but I do recommend if you can find something that will bring your hands up a little higher and give you more space, it makes life a little better for these next few pieces. This time we'll step right leg between your hands and lift your back knee. So even here, we're going to do a little cat and cow. But then we start to add the front knee straightening. So when you do cow, push your front knee straight. Then lunge forward. That would be an inhale, exhale, push your front knee straight. yourself a little back of the leg opening here. And come back in. So again, here your left hand can be on the floor or on your block and your right hand to your thigh. So very similar to when we're doing lizard. Push your right heel down to the ground. Let that give you a little freedom in your belly and in your hip. Use your hand to help you, almost like you're trying to cat pose away from your front thigh, and turn, turn, turn your guts toward the ceiling. So this is a little bit tighter than lizard in the belly thigh region. And you can even try and take this outer right hip back in space as you turn. Your right arm can go up, it can stay on your thigh, or it floats your belly. Good, release that 
spin around so that you're in wide angle forward bend. Give yourself a little relief right here. And spin back to lunge. Good. Take your front leg back, switch sides. Left leg forward. Use your blocks and do a couple of little cat cow shapes. Then start to add the front knee straightening. It doesn't matter if your front knee doesn't actually straighten all the way. You're just wanting to go for a little more mobility through that front of your leg. The next time you come forward to your lunge, stay there. Push your left heel down. As you push your left heel down, let it start to give you buoyancy in your belly. And bring your left hand to your thigh. If you can push on your thigh with your hand, and think about turning your guts through that space to the left. And if you find a spot where you think, oh, I feel good to take my left arm up, you can. Imagine that this outer left hip is drawing back away from your head, and then maybe your guts can drop through more. Release that down, and spin. Spin, spin, spin your legs so that you're in a little wide angle forward bend here. Maybe take your heels in and your toes out. Bring your hands to your knees and give yourself a little inner thigh opener right here. You can even drop one shoulder down for a little twist and then do the other. And come back to your center, hands down, heels out, and walk around your front leg. Good. Switch legs again. Right leg forward, lift your back knee. And then spin your back heel down. So we're going to go for like almost a warrior one shape here. And you could lift you know, all the way up into warrior one. What we're going to go for here is now a little bit of a tighter twist. So when you're starting to twist across your leg, before we were staying inside of our foot, when you're starting to twist across your leg, now you really have to add that gut turn. So you take your guts and you side like you Glide them toward your right leg. And notice I'm using my hand on my thigh to help me. And then I'm going to place my forearm, my forearm or my elbow, right? But I move my guts over this way. And then I turn my guts. Now I've still got my back heel down because I'm really trying to figure out how to do this. But you can also lift your back heel up, right, to make it less. And you can also lower your back knee down. Release that. Switch sides. Left leg forward. If you're doing the warrior one shape, your right heel goes down toward the ground. Yeah. And so this time, my left hand goes on my thigh. So I'm kind of getting my cat pose shape going on here with my belly drawing in. Then I'm moving my belly over to the left. Then I'm trying to get my elbow or forearm down. Then I turn my guts. So for instance, if you're working, move the guts over, forearm to thigh. This honestly might be enough. Like this might be your twist. It might feel like, oh, doing a lot right now. And that's good. If you get your elbow down, that's when you can start to add the, the gut turn to the left, if that makes sense. But it's all really a process, so you start from where your body is in this moment. And whatever it's in is good enough, right? Come out. Switch legs again. Right leg comes forward. Back heel bounce. This is very much like that warrior one shape that we did before. Except this time, we're going to try it with the front knee straight. So we play a little bit with this now. You might need a lot more warm up before you start doing this business. But this is going to be a revolved triangle. So if you find that uh, that 
this pose is just so tight in the back of your leg that you're having to round or that you're, uh, you're like, I don't want to add anything else to this. Then your goal is not going to be to do the, the twist necessarily. You want to dig your front heel, like push that front heel down so that you get a little belly lift. That's actually going to help you open in your hips. And then you can start to do a little gut shift. So I'm trying to smooth my belly over toward my right leg and away. This might be enough. Okay? You can also keep your left hand inside of your foot. Or you can move your left hand outside of your foot. But if you're going to do that, you really have to gut shift. So I haven't even twisted yet. I just did my gut shift. Push my heel down. And now I'm going to turn my guts for a revolved triangle. So in all these revolved poses that are starting to cross the body, where we're crossing to the opposite side, you do the gut shift, then the turn. If I were to stay inside, let's switch legs. If I'm keeping my hand to the inside of my foot, then it's really more about lifting your belly, pushing your heel down, and then trying the gut turn. Right, so if I'm, if I'm not crossing the body, I'm not doing as much of the gut shift, but I am still doing that lift, that belly lift and turn. Then if I'm crossing, like right hand outside of left leg, I'm gonna do gut shift, then turn push my left heel down. So that's going to help power me out of my twist. And if I don't want to do any of that twisting, I do gut shift side to side. So that's going to help me with my spine and my hip. Revolve triangle. All right, bend your knees, step back to down dog. Lower your knees and find child's pose. Putting your big toes to touch, sit your hips back towards your heels, however far you're able. If you're like me and have a knee injury, you're not going to do that unless you're just going to sit. And we can all find sitting. Now for this next piece, you just want to rest. If you've got a whole boatload of props like I do, I'm going to show you how to use them. Um, if you just have blocks, lie flat on your back, and I'll show you how to do with your legs. And if you've got no props, don't worry about it. We're going to get in the resting position, and I'll show you how. If you have like a little bolster, so I've got this little bolster that I'm going to put behind my butt, and then I'm going to get really fancy here and take my blanket, and I actually take my blanket like a third of the way back on my bolster. If you have a giant bolster, you don't need to add anything, probably, but we'll just sort of flat it. Make sure I can reach my blocks, and then I'm going to come back. We did all this twisting, so it's nice to kind of give ourselves a little bit of belly opening in or thigh opening. So if you're lying flat on your back and you don't have any props, like if I didn't have this, I would maybe do like a cross-legged shape, you know, as if I were just sitting cross-legged and lie here, and then you can switch the props a little bit. If you're lying over props, or if you have a little blanket and you want to um, fold like a little roll in your blanket for your neck, you can do that. You can either do the cross legs, or you can do feet together, knees apart, and I prop them because I want to be able to rest. As you lie here and rest, take about 10 breaths. And then if you cross your legs one direction, switch directions. And after your 10 breaths, if you doing feet together, knees apart, 
you can stay or you can stretch your legs out in a little wide like Shavasana legs. And stay another 10 breaths. It's time for you to move. Do so slowly. And then let the video stop. But stay and rest as long as you're able to. Thank you for practicing with me.